I, I can't think. I can't sleep. Look at this. Look at this. The British newspapers say I am a madman. I thought it was amazing. I just believed he was Idi Amin. Well, you know, I'm such a huge fan of Forrest, so of course when I heard about the party, I was like, I have to go and support him. I, I think I just loved uh, the complexity of his performance, you know? He wasn't afraid to sort of like go into, you know, the, the monstrous side of Amin, and he wasn't afraid to go into, you know, the, the funny side of him, and he wasn't afraid to make Idi Amin a human. These are lies! I should throw them out for good. Only you got press press from now on. Do you want something for the headache, sir? No. Something to help you sleep, perhaps? Later. I want you to tell me what to do. You want me to tell you what to do? Yes, you are my advisor. You are the only one I can trust in here. You should have told me not to throw the agents out in the first place. I did, but you did not persuade me, Nicholas. You did not persuade me! No, I was intimidated by him as an actor because I knew what an amazing actor he was and, and is and what a fan I've been of his work for years, so that's intimidating. Um, you know, hoping that you can live in the same space as someone that talented and tell the same stories and, and, and actually, actually hold up on screen beside him, so that was intimidating. But Best actor nominee, Forrest Whitaker. That's King of Scotland. I feel like I know you now. This is like the fourth time we've we've been on the yeah, red. We got a chance to talk a couple of times. I keep, and this is a good thing. I keep say, yes, it is, and I keep saying that every actor on the planet should study your performance. I mean, what has the reaction been among the acting communities? You got the SAG Award. Well, I mean, it, when you get the SAG Award, it's, it's, it's a second embrace. You're being embraced by by all the other actors, and I think they look at work a little differently. So it's a great thing. But I mean, all of the awards too have been really special because they're just so different. It means something differently. When I was in Europe, when I was at the Bath does because uh, it's being embraced by a European audience and that, that means a lot to me too. And you just came back from Africa. What's the reaction there? I mean, I'm sure you were a little nervous about that. In Uganda I was, I was uh, extremely nervous I think because they know Idi Amin. He's like a part of their culture. It's like in the 70s, late 70s, like not so long ago. And so I was wondering if they would like think that I did the character justice or if I was like portraying their country in the proper way and they seemed to they, they loved it the president like said it was he would point to it as a piece of history so from now on he would never have to uh, how do you say it he, I, I won't have to describe it I can just say look at that movie it tells what's going on well do you prepare anything special if you win the Oscar or do you, is it do you have it down pat by now the acceptance speech I, I think every time I, I if something like that were to happen, every time I'm a little nervous, I never know what to say. I'm hoping that like I'm going to be inspired by something, by spirit or something like that. You never know. So for me, every time is different. Keisha, do your children see, do they see Last King of Scotland, and are they like terrified of Daddy? No, no, you know what? Um, the, the little ones didn't, but our older daughter and Forrest's son did. And the, you know what? Um, they weren't terrified. They were actually, it was really amazing. They, they were both, Autumn is 15 and Ocean is 16, and they were both really proud. And they really, they really understood how much he gave to the role, which is, which is magnificent, because they hadn't seen a lot of his work, you know, so it was great. Well, it's been, it's been great talking to you, and I'll see you at the Oscars. Take care, baby. Bye. Bye.